Hey there guys, my name is Rick Kietzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today's video is going to be on the Diana Chaser. If you're unfamiliar with this product, it's very, very cool. I think you're going to like it. So before we get started, definitely want to say thank you to Pyramid Air for sponsoring Airgun Web and the work we do here. If you're looking for your next air gun, your scope, accessory, compressor, all the stuff that goes around the whole air gunning sport as a whole, check them out, www.pyramidair.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. This is the Diana Chaser. Now, if you guys have looked at this product, uh, it comes in a couple different configurations. And the reason I want to do this in a two-part video is because I want to go through the particulars of the Chaser pistol and the rifle. This is the full kit, um, and we're going to kind of put it together, take it apart, and all that kind of stuff. And our next video, we're just going to spend it on the range. So I didn't want to have a super long video uh, taking up a ton of time on this and then barely have any shooting time. I want to actually spend time on the range with the pistol and the rifle uh, because I think that's going to be a lot of fun. But that'll be part two, so definitely stay with us. Okay, so the Diana Chaser is a CO2 pistol, but it comes in this kit and you have all these cool accessories. So here's the pistol itself. Here's our rifle barrel, and of course we'll have a sight there. And we also have the buttstock. So you have this full kit, like here's the pistol. Here's your buttstock, and then here's the rifle barrel. So as it sits like this, you have a pretty cool little package here. This little guy, um, bolt action. You can get magazines for this, by the way, but right now it's just single shot with a nice little single shot tray. The trigger is actually very, very nice. If you notice here, it's, it's a metal trigger and it has a decent pull. So let's go ahead and start breaking this thing down, I guess. So as a pistol, again, we have a bolt action. Uh, if we wanted to put the CO2 in, that's going to go in right here. Okay, it takes one single 12 gram CO2 a cartridge. And down here is where we're going to start taking this part off to turn it into our rifle. Okay, so now we grab this guy. Okay, now this is the first way, uh, besides the pistol, you can actually use this. Um, just as a little micro carbine. So if you wanted to keep the profile really short, you can actually shoot it like this. It lines up beautifully. You have your uh, rear sight, fully adjustable rear sight, and your front sight. And if you want to, you can just shoulder it and you're actually good to go just like that, which is actually a pretty cool a little backpack gun. You know, you're going out camping, you want to take some pests or something like that, you definitely have something with you, which I think is very, very cool. It's extremely light too, by the way. I mean, this would be, you probably, probably never even feel it there in your backpack. But let's say we wanted to go ahead and turn it into the rifle. Well, we got a few things we need to do. First thing we're going to have to do is we have to take this sight off. And I'm going to go grab a screwdriver. It looks like I need a Phillips screwdriver. And we've got our Allen wrenches here to take the barrel out. So I'll be right back. Let me go grab a screwdriver. Stay with me. Okay. So I've got a number two Phillips. Looks like we're gonna have to, now we need a flathead, be right back. Okay. Okay, all right. We have a second number two Phillips up underneath here. All right, there we go. So now we've removed the rear sight in preparation to put the long barrel on. So we've got three Allen screws here. It looks like, let's say two millimeter. Yeah. And as you can see, I don't have any CO2 in the gun. Obviously, you would not 
have CO2 in your gun or have any chance of this being discharged while you're doing this conversion. So please be careful that way. It looks like these are different. Okay, so the two, the front and rear are the same and the center one's slightly longer. So do not get those mixed up. Okay. Put the safety on. Okay. So the barrel just slides right out. Come on out of there. Okay, so you've got a couple O-rings here. You want to be careful when you pull this in and out that you don't nick those. It looks like there's a breech O-ring unless that came off the oh, little breech O-ring right there. Okay. So we got here for the rifle. Okay, it looks like we're going to need to grab that little o ring. There it is. Yep. Okay, so that's going to go right in here. There it is. Perfect. Okay, now I want to make sure I don't damage those o rings, so I'll get some silicone oil. All right, so I'm using silicone oil. Don't use anything other than silicone oil for this. It can damage your gun. Okay. So we have what looks like a barrel support in our rear sight. So this is gonna go in here. And if you notice here, it has a little detent. That's why the center one is longer, wherever it went. There it is. Right, so that one's a little bit longer. So that's going to go down and into that little detent there. Okay, you can actually see it clearly through the center hole there. Okay, it'll actually index. So you just want to make sure it's pretty much lined up and then just slowly bring the tension down and it'll index to align the transfer hole, uh, the transfer port with the hole in the barrel. And then you can tighten your other set screws up here. Okay. It does actually come with spare parts, so if you find that you need them, it comes with an extra breech o-ring and some barrel o-rings, so you're in good shape there. All right, so this is gonna slide over this. So that gives us our support. Now we can go ahead and I think this looks like two and a half. Yeah. So now we've done the conversion to a rifle. Now I gotta tell you, that is very cool. Um, for me, I have a problem with open sights. My eyesight's pitiful. But this is forward enough that I actually can use those open sights very, very easily. They are fully adjustable, so you have both windage and elevation adjustments. So now you've actually got a really, really nice little rifle, which is very cool. This is actually a functioning moderator. If we pull this off here, you will see inside we actually have baffles in there. So this makes it extremely, very, very quiet, which is just awesome. Now, I know you guys wanna know what's the difference in power and range and shot count, all that kind of stuff, if there is any difference in shot count. We're gonna to get to all of that when we get to part two of the video. But today I wanted you guys to be at least familiar with how you can reconfigure the gun. It's very, very simple. You just need a couple little tools and you're, you're up and running. If you wanted to mount a scope to this, you certainly could. Um, it has you know 11 millimeter dovetail mounts right here. I would say a little compact scope would be probably ideal. That is just super, super light. Um, you put a scope on it, I think you'd have just a beautiful little ratting gun. Uh, again, it is CO2 powered, so power is gonna be you know, not that of a PCP, but you're also gonna have a lot of consistency too. So as long as you have plenty of CO2, in the cartridge that you're working from, you're gonna have some pretty good consistency. I know 
this is a great little product because I've actually done the review on this before. Glad we're going to get a chance to take a look at it again. So guys, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and take it back down now. We'll go ahead and convert it back into a pistol here. So to do that, we're just going to basically reverse the process. And now we are back up and running as a pistol. All right, guys, so that's basically how, how you can reconfigure the Diana Chaser. This is a great little kit. It's not very expensive, which is another part of why I like this little kit here. If you are a basement shooter, I know the weather as it gets cooler and you can't go outside, maybe if you guys up north, you have a basement that's heated, you could actually have a 10 meter range pretty easily and actually have a lot of fun with something like this and uh, just really have a good time both pistol and the little carbine you could have just a, a you know a lot of trigger time without having to go outside or go to the range if you have a, a backyard and uh, it, you, you can have a moderated air gun this guy right here with the barrel and the moderator is super super quiet we'll get all those db numbers so you guys can see what that's like but i can tell you it's very very quiet it's just a great little package very affordable very fun to shoot just need some CO2 and pellets, and you're going to have a lot of fun. Guys, definitely stay tuned to part two, which will be coming up shortly. We're going to be taking this out to the range and just having a lot of fun. Again, my name is Rick Utzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews, and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.